Okay, what we're going to do next here, to get deeper understanding, we've got a commercial three-phase induction motor here. I've taken it apart, and I've got a little magnet on a stick here, and we're going to put it inside, and I've got a variable frequency device powering it. Now when I turn on the magnetism here, you can see there's a rotating magnetic field inside the device. But the magnet I've put inside is just rotating with the field at 3 hertz. If I turn it up, say, to 6 hertz, that rotates with the field even faster. 9 hertz rotates with the field even faster. Just for fun, I can put a little cover on this thing so that I don't have to hold the axle. And we can turn on the field this way. Now watch the magnet move as we speed it up. That's 4 hertz, 5 hertz, 50 hertz. When we take the rotor out of this three-phase commercial induction motor, which had a strong rotating field, and we put it around our own rotating field, U, V, W, just three wire coils hooked up to a power supply. And we start to turn on the power. This is at 10 hertz. It starts to spin quite nicely, despite a little inertia. Beautiful, isn't it? So there's absolutely no trouble having our own little coils instead of the one from the machine to study further. Now when we add a simple magnetic dipole on the magnetic rotor, one like it's a bar magnet in the middle, it's been quite nicely at 5 hertz rather than 10. So we're clearly getting a lot more power just by having a little magnetic dipole on the rotor, like this. A red out there and a S out there. Incidentally, if we put both poles out, so they put in opposite directions, we go to 10 hertz, which with the iron spins, the iron wants to spin one way and the magnets want to spin the other, so it's self-limiting and we can't do anything. This is not what we want to do in combination with iron. We don't want both poles sticking out the same way. It has to be a dipole across the center, so the iron turning effect will be the same as a magnetic turning effect. Just to carry this line of investigation a bit further, suppose we put two somewhat larger neomagnets north that way, south that way, like a bar magnet across the middle, and we have to move the coils a bit further apart. Realistically, these could be set into the steel, but I have to work with the steel rotor I've got. And we turn on, say, one hertz of power. Now you see it spins the same direction as the iron at much higher speeds, but only at one hertz. The iron won't even move here. These would have to be set into the rotor closer to the iron. And we speed the thing up. It spins very, very powerfully indeed. Same conditions. We were just a few hertz. If we had a lot of power to these magnets, and just have steel alone. This is at 15 hertz. It takes about 10 or 15 hertz to get this thing moving. This has just been a quick demo to show how much power we could get by combining magnets with a copper induction rotor. We just have two magnets like a bar magnet, two little ones on each side of the center, blue red, and it's spinning at 1 hertz. And the iron wouldn't do anything here. So if you spin this thing up, By 10 hertz, we'll have the combined torque of magnets and iron together. It's really flying along quite nicely now at 10 hertz. Look at that. That's just two little magnets. Now I'll show you what it looks like with the magnets removed. And this is exactly the same thing with the magnets removed. All I'm doing is starts really slowly. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? Like my lawnmower. So you just saw the difference between having two magnets and no magnets for exactly the same effect. So if we had magnets adding to iron, combined torque, it's much, much greater than iron or the copper induction alone. Is that clear? One more time, just so everybody knows. This is just two little magnets at 3 hertz. By the time we get 10 hertz, a bit dangerous, isn't it? By the time we get 10 hertz, it's just flying around. Compare them with what we had before. This is at least 10 times more powerful. We can save so much energy just doing this. 
Of course, the magnets here would have to be embedded in the steel laminate. You wouldn't have them outside. This is still a very interesting thing. Those are just two little neomagnets. Okay, did we learn something today? Thank you very much.